Welcome to Top Shelf Men, I'm Reese. Today I wanted to discuss a post I saw on a Red Pill Facebook group. The reason I wanted to discuss this particular post is because it really emphasizes the point that being Red Pill aware and deprogramming yourself is not something that happens overnight. It is a process of living and understanding women's nature and basically digesting things slowly as you understand them and slowly improving yourself. And on the other hand, it really emphasizes women's hypergamy and the overall problem that young men have with dating modern women in today's society. Let's take a look at the post. So the post starts off, so guys, I want to share an interesting experience. I recently had a second date. It went extremely well. We get along. We have the same goals. We're a similar age. We agree on a lot of things, including politics. She is an absolute 10. Man, I could see us together and I had butterflies. She was a unicorn. So I already see that there's some problems with this individual pedestalizing the woman he's on a date with. He talks about that them having the same goals, agreeing on a lot of things, including politics, that she's an absolute 10, that he can al he's already picturing a future with her. Now, the thing is, they've only been on two dates. So how well does he really know her? And for red pill aware men, we understand that women tend to default to agreeableness, particularly when they are around a guy they find attractive or high value enough. So she's not if she likes if she likes the guy, she's not going to go out of her way to disagree with his politics, disagree with with a lot of things. That'll be disagreeableness which will basically end the date immediately. Now, if she does like him, even if she's stretching herself, she's going to she's going to be somewhat deceptive because she wants to be she wants to like a job interview. She wants to show the best version of herself if she finds him attractive or high value enough. But he is already taking uh the experience of meeting her from two dates as oh my god, she's amazing. Saying that she's a 10, that she's a unicorn. So let's read on. Then we spoke about money, and she was absolutely without hesitation admitting she is unattracted to men who earn less than her. I asked her, the bills are paid. There is food on the table. The kids are paid. The cars are paid. And he still earns less. Still, are you attracted? Her immediate response without hesitation, no, absolutely not. I'm not attracted to a man who earns less than me. Immediately, I lost attraction, and it was crushing. Even five days later, I still feel deeply that money was the deal breaker. We don't talk about this for fear of retribution from others, but I will admit it genuinely hurt. And even though we haven't spoken in a few days, I still feel hurt by those comments. And from that honesty, the guy was immediately crushed and he lost attraction to her. So that tells me that he doesn't really know her and his attraction to her, calling her a 10 out of 10 or a unicorn, is more of an infatuation. Because he, he doesn't even really know her. And again, depending on the context as to how she made that statement about, oh, he has to earn more than me. Absolutely, you know, I will, I will, I will not attract it to somebody that earns less than me. It is quite possible that that was also a shit test, because she wanted to gauge his reaction to say to her saying, "Oh, are you worth more than me, or are you worth less?" Let's read on. I run a small business. I have a high drive to achieve and earn more, massive ambition, and I'm sure she earns more than I do as she has a master's degree and is in a well-off role. Needless to say, back on the horse, gents. Back to grinding and making yourself kings of your own accord. You got this, guys. You don't need validation. Thanks for reading. And this is why I think that her making the statement that absolutely not, she's not attracted to a man who earns less than her, was a shit test. Because he's already, uh, you know, on the post, he's already pedestalizing her. 
And I'm sure that he talked about his ambition, his dreams for the future, and his business, and all the things he wants to grow into. So I think that uh, I can surmise that the girl that he was on the date with was saying, well, this is what I'm worth. What are you worth? And she wanted to gauge his response. And with his post, it seems that, again, from him putting her over here and him feeling that he's still over here, earning his way up, needing to grind more, uh, he did, he really, you know, failed that shit test. And that's another reason also why you don't really want to disclose everything about yourself to women particularly when you have just met them especially before you've been intimate with them because again women are natural shit testers and you don't know when they're gonna come out with a weird question or a weird comment out of the blue and basically you are selling yourself short i think there are two really good takeaways from this post the first one being is that all women are hypergamous the 10 out of 10 unicorn, the ugly girl that nobody wants to touch or look at, uh, all our female ancestors, the, everybody, all women are hypergamous because they basically want to be with the best man they can get. Some women are honest about it, some women are not, but they are all hypergamous without a doubt. The second takeaway from this post is that the guy who wrote this does not live in a, does not have an abundant mindset. He lives in a world of scarcity where he meets an attractive woman who has a couple of things in common with him and immediately he becomes infatuated. She's a 10 out of 10. She's a unicorn. If he lived in a world of abundance, he would be, well, you know, it didn't work out. I have, I have these other girls I'm talking to. I have these other plates I'm spinning. And that way, you know, again, you're going to find a lot of girls that have things in common with you. But when you live in an abundance, it's just another girl. If she if she's not willing to enter your frame, you just let her go and you have no problems with it. And it also, living in an abundance mindset versus a scarcity mindset is you really see women for what they really are. You know, hypergamous, um, a, a bit spoiled, uh, emotional. But when, because you have, because you deal with so many different women. But when you live in a scare in a world of scarcity, it's any woman that's attractive and there's a potential for that there to be a relationship or for there to be intimacy. Basically, they, you know, these guys that live in scarcity, they grab it like a death grip and they have no choice but to become infatuated because that is their only option. And this is why it's important to do the work, because knowing that women are hypergamous women will naturally just more women will be attracted to men who are on top of their game in their physique they're on top of their game with their money they're on top of their game with with their dent in the universe you are on your path for that and the women will come and that creates abundance in your mind and it doesn't let you put up with women who will not who are not willing to enter your frame so guys keep doing the work Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And uh, stay tuned for more content from Top Shelf Men. I'm Reese. Peace.